Oh. Or towards the end of the split. Yeah, the the, Dra the Draven and the Lucian of the Callista Gone, though, means Zeri probably going to be high priority. So I think that's the big debate, Wukong or Zeri right now. Zeri, I was going to say, is probably the one that I favor more, but it will give the Wukong across here. And now I'm curious to see what Jackie Love has in his back pocket to go for it. Actually, sorry, the Poppy that we taken here over the course of that. Okay. And Azir denied from Scout as well. So, you know, Nike, no slouch on the Azir. Um, but more importantly denying the pick from scout with silas gone as well so now something like the ari maybe could be an answer for scout uh, but also the situani was banned in the last one could be for jj could be for flandre still kind of wide open there with the pick yeah it's something that we've seen from uh, tn in the jungle but um we haven't seen it are we actually seen it twice from jj so i wouldn't be surprised to see that go in towards the jungle. I think it's just nice into the Poppy. Like, you get long range engage. Poppy's not really going to threaten you in, like, invades and stuff like that. So, Sejuani gets that opportunity to farm up into the later portion of the game. Looks like Jackie Love is going to respond with the Sivir. And this has kind of been something we've seen a decent amount in towards the Zeri, but can struggle just because it, when you get towards those late game fights, the AoE damage from the Zeri, if you've got like a composition like EDG look like they're starting to feel that can dive on top of the Sivir, she can have uh, some issues. So I'm curious now if EDG want to go towards things like the Ari that you were highlighting Munch to make this life more uncomfortable for the Sivir. Good question, Talia banned off the board by top esports and i will say this is here we criticized it for edg in game number one alongside the callista well sivir and azir very similar game <laughs> yeah. it has to be said like they're, they're mean, Shurima, that, you know? both sharima yeah <laughs> we're thinking uh, the same thought process <laughs> there as uh, nautilus gonna be banned away by edg trying to deny some engage and rightly so because mark i mean the, the man knows how to throw an anchor let's just say that it is interesting though because i think we've definitely seen the full shift over towards at least with these two supports much more of the enchanters right like the yumis the namis yeah. the lulus these kind of things where nasa still up and available which i imagine edg are going to ban away but i think the biggest thing that they're looking at is going right top what are your actual engage tools here because poppy not radiant engager and um, azir question mark very unreliable Dagda, Dagda. my mind's just ash Ash is the answer, True. surely. Against Lulu True. Zeri, you have yeah. the engage tool. Could Mark bring out the honestly, Ash support? Yeah, honestly, this could be a spot for it. The only thing is, you do have to be very careful where I would actually... Yeah, the biggest thing is, like, you don't know how heavy EDG are going to be on dive. Ash doesn't like things that dive in on top of her. She likes to be able to play at range. And when you've already got the Sejuani there, you do have to be a little bit careful about that. So, yeah, it looks like instead, well, Mark going to go back towards an old classic in the Leon instead. Yeah, I mean, this is a bit more Mark, isn't it? Yeah, the Ash yeah. support. Let's see, when you think about Mark, you don't think about Ash. You think about Nautilus and Leon. You know, he's a 2020 support. Everyone <laughs> just played Nautilus and Leon. Um, over to EDG then, as uh, my dreams get thwarted. Um, and it's over to see what these solo laners end up locking in. It's a blind pick in the top lane, and it's a counter pick in the mid lane. I mean, I'm kind of surprised. It feels like Flandre hasn't really learned his lesson from the last game. Like, Wayward can go immediately back towards the Yone here if he wants to. And it looks like Scout covering the Ari for the moment. I think Ari, probably your best bet here. Um give you a lot of backline threats, good in like mid jungle to play through, like the opportunity to try and lean in towards these bot side dives. But um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Wayward just goes back towards the Yone again. Late game scaling, <laughs> great team fighting. Like Look at you, you've got a ton of options here. Yeah, Wayward knows it as well. You could see him grinning away as he chats to his teammates. Like he's got the Jax, he's got the Yone. Like you say, options galore for Wayward. And a great game number one. You know, we were kind of laughing at his ultimates a little bit. Uh, but, you know, it's a very, <laughs> very predictable ultimate when it comes out. And in the team fights he was landing it, that's when it matters the most. So, Wayward changing things up, though. Going on to the Jax now. Another pick that he has been able to dominate on across the course of the year. And now, EDG. I, th I think we should start here, Dagda, with the, the change-up from EDG. Because this is a very different style to what they brought to Game 1. But well, it's still pretty heavy team fight style, right? Like, you look at a lot of it, it's going to be a case of, like, trying to enable Zeri. you got your setup coming through from the Sejuani and the Nar, like, strong front to back. It's still kind of leaning into that same identity. I think the bigger thing is just having an earlier spiking mid laner would help give them control where they can try and play in through Dragons, through bot side, and find better skirmishes at Rift Heralds as well. Just make things overall a hell of a lot easier for them to try and operate with this composition. Um, and... As well, when you look across at um, 
top esports, there's not many things that can really keep Viper in check. So if Viper does get up and rolling, like there's not a lot of point and click CC apart from like Mark flashing forward, say, to get the stun, or even like a flash in from Wayward or Leap Strike from Wayward to like get on towards Viper. So you do have to be quite careful here as top esports that Viper doesn't get these leads that can just be such a pain to deal with. Well, we're headed towards game number two here, Dagda. It's top esports in EDG, with EDG starting strong but falling in the mid game. And top esports showing that they want to repeat what happened in round four of playoffs. They want to get themselves that win on the board once more. And EDG are the ones that must prove themselves the current world champions. They love a high seed as they move towards worlds once more. But whether that can happen is all in the hands of top esports. It's time for game number two here as we continue our penultimate playoffs game here in the LPL. EDG looking to try and strike back. The last time we saw these two teams face off, it was EDG who drew first blood. But Top Esports, with a great game one, able to get the first on the scoreboard. And at least for EDG, they're still sticking to their guns, right? They kind of have seen team fighting as their way to victory over the course of playoffs. And they want to try and keep that the same story here against Top Esports. Yeah, I will say top esports team fight is not to oh, be yeah. sniffed at either, right? Yeah. With an Azir and a Sivir, you've got big old frontline in that Leona and the Poppy. You've got a Jax who can just cause all kinds of mayhem in the backline, but also can offer that sideline threat. And I think that is going to be crucial in this game when you consider how the mid game went in game number one of the series, right? Wayward on that Yone, the, the play around Baron from top esports to bait a TP out from EDG so that Wayward couldn't be answered. You can anticipate that kind of macro play coming out once again from top esports once we get later on into the game. Yeah, so here's the thing, like top esports, you can look at their win cons and it's like, you know, all right, if Wayward gets ahead, we can play split push. Maybe we can look for team fights. If we get a good flank with Knight, he can get, you know, the engage. We can get, a, like, there's a very simple checklist for EDG. It's one, are we team fighting? And two, is Viper popping off? That is the win con for EDG in this entire game. Like, there is so little thing, like so few options here for top esports yeah. to actually get on top of Viper that if Viper can play safe with the Lulu, get the movement speed, like he can chase down everyone on top esports. Azir doesn't do well at trying to kill a Zeri. Sivir doesn't do well at trying to kill a Zeri. The only yeah. people that you're really looking at is this Jax. So it feels like you've got a lot more opportunities on top esports to try and play through multiple different angles, whereas EDG are lock and loaded into this one kind of style. Ooh, Tian does get spotted in the end by JJ here, but a nice little knock up. Tian going for the 1v1, and the blue buff is helping out. JJ, 1 HP, the red buff burning. It's not enough. <laughs> Wards in the brush and walks away with his life, but loses the top side of his jungle. Tian, very happy with the way that 1v1's panned out. Really nice job from Tien. Like, look at where the two lanes are at the moment. You got push in mid, push in top. He knew that he'd have the support of his team, so he was like, right, I'm just going to go for it. And then he manages to get the flash from JJ. Two camps on the top side, and JJ now left scrambling. Mark trying to get an engage on the bottom side. It's just going to be trading back and forth, though, is... Come on, oh, Viper, look no. for more. Tien moves in. Flandre alone on the top side. Good flash from Flandre to dodge the damage. Oh, and Ergin gets the tower shot. I didn't I didn't think he was in range. Tien tanks a tower shot. A huge fumble. Yeah, I think the minions didn't get underneath the tower. So Wayward ended up tanking up the tower. So when G Tien went for the play, Flandre is able to turn it around. So really nice job by the EDG top laner. Turn that mm, a bit of a whoopsie from top esports. After it starts so well for Tien, he gets MVP in game number one of the series. He almost solo kills JJ, and then it all falls apart on the top side. Now Tien just chasing <laughs> JJ out of the jungle once again. A scout struggling in the mid lane here. Knight getting massive pressure down. Feels like a very different start of things compared to what we saw from game number one. It was all about EDG. I mean, still, JJ is behind, but at least he's not falling massively behind because Tien hasn't been able to continue that success. Like, a one camp lead, but Tien really wanted to make sure that Viper and Mako aren't able to contest the wave, but it is a slow push, the, the, so you won't actually lose too much. the classic poppy shield throw gang, you know? <laughs> yeah. Every, we see this all the time. <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to look at way. Yeah, so the minion dies. Watch uh, the help bar here. So minions die. Wayward ends up tanking, 
And that's why he doesn't get the follow up on the backside. So just a bit of fortune. As Wait, what? The 1v1 what? under the tower. What's going on? I don't know. I do not know. But Flandre is loving every second of it because he's got two kills so far this game off the back of and Wayward and Tien. Go for dives. Now JJ trying to contest these chickens. Tien in a 2v1 right here does get the chicken, pushes Scout away here. Will get charmed, will get stunned. Can they finish this poppy off? I don't think so. Walks away, and Knight doing big damage onto JJ. Forces him away. Scout now trying to return it as Tien moves in. Top esports will not let off the accelerator this game. No, but it's a case of, you know, are you actually running the race or are you, you know, running into a wall? Because topside, it's been a brick wall here where Wayward tries to go for the all-in. Red buff, though, with the slow and also then just having that extra little bit of CDR thanks to blue buff means that as Wayward flashes in, yes, he gets the kill, but Wayward has already uh. used his TP to get back to top lane. So Flandre doesn't lose any creeps. You trade one for one. And now there's a 20 CS lead in that top side. Whereas when you look at how Tien is trying to play around this mid lane, I mean, you just don't have the damage on JJ to really answer for what Tien can bring to the table in these early stages. So when you go into these 2v2s, the edge is in favor of top esports. Man, Wayward just, uh, he doesn't believe in minion waves, you know? And like, this is a man that dives without minions consistently, apparently. Spider gets a nice little hop uh, to keep himself safe there. Wayward, you know, will struggle a little bit in the range matchup. It's when you can find those stuns. That's your window. And uh, when Flytre walks close enough to a leap strike, apparently, because Sheen is a good item. Yeah, Tien trying to see if he can try and capitalize on this, though. You have JJ in the area. So Tien not running the hex flash, so can't get over the wall. Is disabled at the moment. So, so Flandre. Yeah, Flandre really struggling in these trades. You know, JJ is here. Tien. I think maybe looking for the counter, Kanga said. No, nope, just charges on in towards Flandre here. Steadfast presence to protect his top laner. JJ arrives and everything neutralizes once more. Dagda, this is a tense top lane 2v2 so far this game. As JJ doesn't want to let the recall go through. I'm not sure if he was actually aware, but Tien does get spotted as he tries to move into the top side once more. So a lot of the focus of the camera has been on top side, but a lot of my focus has always just been on this bottom side of the map as well. Because there is a nice CS lead opening up for Jackie Love here because Mako tried to roam to help this early invade from Tien on the bot side. Viper actually got pushed off the turret. Now Jackie Love might be in trouble though. Takes a lot of damage, but this is where you got to be careful because even though we're looking at top side and you know Tien trying to get Wayward back into a position where he can step up as the carry, Jackie Love is still getting this lead over Viper. Yeah, you see 10 CS lead slightly more as Mark looks to clear some vision in the bottom side and threatens to go in onto Viper as well. Viper's got to be a little cautious as the boomerangs just consistently landing from Jackalove. That's the thing I've been impressed at. Every time the, pa the camera pans down to this bottom side, Jackalove is hitting the boomerangs onto Viper. And, you know, that's a player that is very good at dodging those skill shots. So a lot of it is down to prediction from Jackalove and great positioning there. So... Good stuff in the bottom side. Even gold, though. All things considered, Dagda. And that's exactly what I want to see. Flandre oh trying to push gosh. the wave. He's in a 2v1 lane at this point. No, that's the oh, wrong place no. to go. He's walked into the brush. He's stunned up. He's stunned up again. He turns mega. Can he escape? Tries to get over the wall, but knocked up and taken down. Wayward finally getting get killed. Now in the bottom side, Jagalove going in. Mako in trouble and annihilated. No, gets the shield at the last second. Flash forward from Jagalove. JJ is here though. It's 2v3. And Top Esports trying to find the play anyway. Jagalove falls and Viper finds himself some gold. It's a one for one on the bot side. So it will be the minion wave loss for Jagalove. But on the top end of the map, Top Esports will end up winning out. And this is the game that I expected us to get in this series. Bloodbath top side, fights on the bottom side, and everyone looking for any inch that can give them that lead. Absolutely. And top esports really being the ones to put the foot down there. But then JJ answering beautifully. We could take another look as Mark, you know he's the one to go in. Mark is always the one to go in. And I have to say, like, to see Mark step up the way he has on top esports has been great. Like, really nice play there to get the engage onto the uh, the Lulu. But the problem is not realizing that JJ is here. JJ has actually been doing such a good job of tracking where Tien is and matching Tien across the map. I honestly just think Jackie Love and Mark were like, oh, yeah, well, wherever Tien is, JJ is more than likely going to be there with the way that he's been playing. But unfortunately, they guess wrong. And it ends up being a kill back onto the top esports agent yeah. carry. 
Crucially, Mark hitting six in the brush as well, right? Whereas Mako was still level yeah. five. So just trying to use that small, uh, you know, experience spike, but it bites them in the ass in the end. So Viper now with a kill. Jackalove did get a kill in the play as well, right? Ultimately, they did kill Mako. So um, Jackalove still with an advantage in terms of the CS because of the early laning and a kill apiece. So slight advantage in the bottom side for top esports, but it is slight, and that's the key thing there. Up on the top side, Wayward, you know, getting that kill with Tien, we kind of got distracted from that top side play. It does mean that now they're on two kills apiece after all of the top lane shenanigans this game. It does mean Wayward should be in a good position to have a fun old time in this top side with the way it's been going so far. Speaking of two, though, I mean, two objectives now over to top esports. They've been doing a really, really good job of keeping control off of the push for nice. I mean, how Wayward's been going, but uh, this isn't going for Wayward anymore. Yeah, I said he was going to have a fun old time. I'm not sure I was right on that one. Hit by the boulder, knocked up by the giant Poro. Counter-Strike comes out. The stun is not going to land, though. The flail what? doesn't hit, and the Gromp comes out once more. But here's Scout to finish the job. Wayward with a nice dodge. Fair play to him. But in a 1v3, there's only so much you can do. But that's going to be Rift Tower going down in the mid lane here, getting a bunch of extra gold for Nice because Scout had to commit up towards that top side. So even though you get the kill, it's still top esports responding on the map. This is going to be a huge amount of gold for top esports. Not only do they finish this tower, but getting all of those plates for an Azir this early into the game. Night is going to be terrifying as you enter the mid game. Yeah, and again, you're having the advantage on the bot side for Jackie Love as well. He's just back to picked up his Kraken Slayer. You'll have the uh, Luden's Echo more than likely picked up here for Knight as well. So overall, I mean, top esports hitting their stride right now. Especially when you're looking at, you know, Next Dragon in four minutes' time. The Rift Herald up and around about the same time. Finding these skirmishes off the back of some of these big uh, item breakpoints for top esports could be very nice. So EDG really need to make sure they're working with JJ, working with Scout, trying to find some picks early before you end up in a full 5v5 against top esports yeah try and find some kind of advantage because it does feel like it's top esports that are getting those advantages for themselves to start this game off and i mean you know jackie was already getting a bit of a cs lead for himself now as you mentioned the item disparity means that viper absolutely cannot trade he absolutely cannot contest that bottom side unless he has some kind of numbers advantage uh, the Sun Disc taken down there in the mid lane by Scout. There's Drake not going to be up for another three minutes. Top Esports got the first one of the game for themselves, but that Herald up in two and a half. And I feel like Top Esports, the way they're playing, they're going to want every single neutral objective they can get. Yeah, and I think they're going to look for a dive on bot side as well. I mean, could you more figuratively, literally roll out the red carpet on this bot side of the minimap? Like, that river has so many pink wards there. Now you just add that Skull of Crab to it as well. And to already spot out JJ, but they definitely want to this. see if they can make something happen. JJ is being suffocated. Oh. So is Scout on the top side. Look at that. Delivered on a platter by night. Places him next to the wall for Tien to slam it home. This combo of Tien and Knight, they played together all the way back in 2017. And the synergy is still absolutely there. That was B-E-A beautiful from Knight Almighty in the mid lane. And well, Wayward. This is now you on the wrong side, bud. Yeah, you say that, but he got a cheeky little <laughs> W in there. His flag trade bounced over his head. So I think winning the trade, it's kind of hard to say, honestly. The top lane has been nothing but entertaining as Viper. Oh, is going to use his ultimate in the bottom side here. Trading between the AD carries. Jagalove goes forward, flashes back out. JJ tanking the tower and will be tanky enough. Another for Viper and now plates galore for the Zeri. And that's actually huge for EDG. They won't quite get another place as it will cross over, but the fact that you're getting these kills on towards Viper is massive. Again, we said Viper is the wing con for EDG. This is the man that needs to win it all. And if he's not able to get these early leads, that's going to become so much more difficult. But we'll see it here. This was just gorgeous. Like, they spot out Scout clearing the ward. Knight immediately goes over. And it's it's just value. Like, absolutely all are no nest, just beautiful from top east. Yeah, honestly, just gorgeous. Nothing but net.
uh, That's on one. that one. Nothing Look, I'm an Irish man, it's, all right? It's I'm really trying hard. my best here. It's really, you know really hard to get that ball through that hoop <laughs> without touching any net unless yeah, there literally yeah. isn't a net. Uh, you know what? I've seen videos where the man goes through the net as well, and I feel like true. that's just what they went for. It was just, yeah, Knight diving through the net alongside I'm, I'm that. I'm pretty target. sure that video that you're talking about is uh, Space Jam. I'm pretty sure that happens in Space Jam. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that really counts Wait, as a video. I, I thought that was a, a real reality. Is that not just like, you know, an accurate, well, do uh, accurate documentary of when Monstar has tried to... Uh, I mean, honestly... Her? With the way the top esports are played today, it might well be a documentary because they are the bond stars. They're absolutely destroying, mechanically speaking, here. It's a 1,000 gold lead in their favor as Herald started up. You can see Scout trying to move on over. Knight there to answer and will spot this one out. Scout decides to go for the ward instead. Knight, feeling saucy though, wants to go for the play, dodges the Everfrost here, hiding behind the Scuttlecrab so that the charm can't come on through. But EDG moving over to try and find the top esports solo lane. The Herald was taken, but Knight will walk away with his life. Has oh, flash available, might know? get charmed here. Scout moves forward, good flash from Knight, dodges away. Yeah, it was uh, going to be a risky one from Knight. It was basically Scout trying to predict where Knight was going to flash to, but not able to get us, but flash still burnt by the top esports mid laner. Push though coming in the mid lane though for top esports. It's EDG will trade it for a dragon. Top terror goes down for in favor of top esports as well. So again, we're seeing like top esports happy to give second dragons for positioning on the map. Very similar to game one. Yeah, honestly, top esports just saying, we don't care about dragons. What we care about is a gold lead and they've managed to find it for themselves. This will be a tier two going down at the top side as well. One of the great advantages of having a Sivir on your team as well as you just eradicate those waves and you push so quickly. A 3,000 gold lead now in favor of top esports at the 16 minute mark, but Flandre will do some work to minimize that with a tower in the bottom side. The thing you got to be worried about though is that Tien still has that Rift Herald in his back pocket. So now you've lost two Terra's top, one Terra mid, and there's no Terra's gone to the bot side, but actually sorry, two Terra's gone to the mid lane as well. So now you've got the opportunity as top esports to like put pressure on towards inhibitor turrets or push in wave mid group on bot side and look to take both terrors off of one herald push with a very difficult response for edg when they are potentially just pushed into their base edg still trying to fight for vision though not accepting that they are uh, being pushed back just yet not going to go down without a fight that is for sure one issue though for edg is yes they got the more recent drake but it's a cloud soul not going to be the greatest even with all the buffs it's still it doesn't feel equal to that of like an infernal or a hex tech or, a, or even an ocean soul or a mountain soul um edg though playing towards this bottom side wayward playing respectfully though and i will say wayward over the course of this year the amount of growth we've seen out this top laner he came into the league being very much a coin flip top laner and let's be honest the start of this game was a little bit like that but when it comes to the big map plays when it comes to the team plays he's on board with the top esports strategy i mean there's a reason he was rookie of the split right this man was absolutely spectacular when he joined top esports and it's great to see him have that growth and especially keep that personality that um and everything and now jumping on towards flandre might be in trouble uh, Wayward, we just complimented him and immediately he goes under the tower, but that's my result now. With a TP, there's a five-man play from Top Esports as they herald onto the tower. Wayward dashes away, keeps himself alive. Tower down, JJ forced to flash there as the boomerang blade flies on through. EDG, five strong as well, but they've already lost the tower at this point. It's Mark and Knight and Jackalove staying here, not wanting to back away. And I think it's a ooh, great read on both sides from both EDG and Top Esports right edg are aware rift herald will go bottom lane. that's where yeah, top esports want to try and put the pressure so what they do is they try and quickly overload bot side of the map to pick off top esports before they get all their waves in check to go for that play but top esports respond in kind scout looking for tn great ever frost into the charm there but tn flashes on out he's on the cloud rift can he escape counter strike comes on through tn's still going for now scout finally finishes the job his wayward jumps onto the army but jaggy love churning through the health bars with the ricochet doesn't have the damage yet and it's a pick for edg yeah edg just managed to get one onto tn which was pretty sizable there if they can try and hold out towards this map presence get some vision troll back push out waves with a minute and a half until that dragon they re want to try and look for these fights but right now it is so hard because they try to make that play on the bot side top esports 
read what EDG are trying to do and respond. But then Tien getting caught out here after such a good play from top esports. The ultimate coming through from the Lulu to guarantee the knock up onto Tien. It was just an easy pick. And this is where I was kind of looking at Viper going, hang on a second, Viper's getting scary in that fight. But yeah. we'll just back away doesn't want to run into the full I mean, force of top esports i think it's worth talking about anyway because whether or not it's that fight or the game in general he's on two items on yeah. the Zeri, headed towards that infinity edge next and we all know what happens once Zeri hits three items we've all seen it a hundred times at this point across the world and viper is one of the best of them that is a terrifying prospect for top esports. They need to maintain control and find a bigger advantage before they get to the point where EDG can just go for that party. Yeah, and that's why I think top esports vision control has been so crucial for them. Like we talked about the red carpet earlier on, they're still keeping really good vision control in River, and it's making it hard for EDG to just immediately set up for these fights, right? Because you need to make sure that you're not getting flanked by Knight, not getting flanked by Wayward, by Mark. But you need to get the opportunity for viper to actually play at these fights and have a lot of space to move so the fact that they're not able to contest vision as edg is hindering them a little bit it's also denying them the opportunity to find picks with like scout and jj before these fights kick off top esports moving to the top side here is drake spawns EDG. i mean their baron is so fast yeah top esports are just gonna threaten the baron here they're gonna go straight on in viper and mako moving over as wayward threatens on the bottom side trying to stop the rotation from scout tp available for both scout and flandre here edg decide to back away peel back to the mid lane here scout now moving through the jungle wayward behind enemy territory here we said about flanks for top esports and absolutely they have it as wayward in the red buff here looking to get on to scout looking to get onto the back line tian half hp already everfrost comes on out as wayward exhausted but scout forced away now that's going to be spirit rush used as scout tries to get back onto wayward a great job setting up for viper but wayward jumps over to the rest of his team yeah flandre trying to threaten has the flash has the narrow ultimate but not going to do so both teams will back away EDG, though, still hovering here. They know top esports are looking at this Baron. TP comes out from EDG to regroup. Scout back, full HP. JJ, only half right now. Another TP on the other side. This one's Wayward arriving on the scene. 5k on the Baron here. Viper over the wall. He's on the Zeri, but not three items just yet. TN gets the knockback. It's on to Scout here as they're in the pit trying to finish off the Baron. Viper over the wall. JJ, low on HP, tries to move in. It's one for Viper, but he's traded back. Wayward now tanking up as top esports. They get the Baron. Can they escape? Flandre over the wall, flashes on in, but he can't quite find the stuns. Wayward is as in the meantime, Tien sacrifices himself to save his solo laners. Wayward escaping. Mark there alongside him as Knight plays bodyguard. Scout goes in. Charm lands. It's big damage, but not big enough. Three escape on top esports with the Baron buff. EDG were too late to the play. And you will let see Tien give his life so that the rest of top esports can escape. This was tense. But Flandre, not having access to Meganar, couldn't play up. Same with JJ. The low health bars on EDG's front line is a disaster here. And Ari taking out the uh, picture as well it means it's so difficult for them to get the CC to enable Viper. Viper still tries to go in. It's getting so much damage off. But watch it on the backside. Oh, actually, we may not even get a chance. As we're straight in <laughs> yeah. towards this dragon, it's all hands on deck. Jacket of so aggressive there to stop JJ walking force to guarantee that Baron. Now, Dragon, the next target. This ain't Soul for anyone. This ain't even close to Soul. But Top Esports won't let EDG have it for free. Wayward threatening on the flank here. It's top Esports step onto the objective once again. Wayward going to be caught up, charmed, ever frosted. But he just jumps on in. The rest of the team here to support with long range damage. How does he survive so long? Buying time for the Dragon resets. Tien there in the pit. Does get the Drake Knight. Low on HP. Boulder finishes him off. But Jackie Love is firing on all cylinders. Flashes forward onto Viper. But he's taken down. And now it's Scout's time to shine. Mark Tien trying to escape with their lives they get the drake but at what cost scout trying to finish off more trying to find the charm mako there alongside him they just don't have any Tiago damage viper. right now what tn finds a solo kill on the viper on the back side of the fight what is happening Dexter? it's the rope -a dope tn was like peekaboo i see you flashes over the wall to viper to surprise him now tn Still hunting Mako and Scout. You don't have the TPs here. Tien just wants this scuttle crab, but uh, 
That was it so well played by Tien. In a 2v1, Tien just walks up like, 2v1 me, bro. Oh. This is my scuttlecraft. So really nice pick here from EDG on towards Wayward. But with all the attention on towards Wayward, top esports finish off the dragon. But this is where it starts to get a bit funky, right? Viper is trying to carry, but doesn't have his ult back up and available from the last Baron fight. So he's not getting the movement speed, which is why you see Jackie Love flashing forward here, thinking maybe he can get it. But with the smite from JJ and the damage from Viper, he's able to escape. And this is where, watch Viper. He thinks that he can try and help out, but Tien flashes over the wall, immediately gets on towards Viper. Just a really nice call there from Tien. We'll get something back. But again, look at the scoreboard, as I said, as it disappears. Six yeah. and one for Viper now. He is getting huge, and you're starting to see him be the difference maker in these fights. We haven't got enough damage or enough pressure on the map right now for top esports, especially with the Baron now gone, that it's not going to give time after this Lord Dominic has been finished for Viper to start working on his IE. Yeah. Worth mentioning that as well, right? That it's not going to be the IE third. Viper feeling like he needs to go for the Lord Doms as his third item. And I will say, the end of that play, I feel like you've got a quote quick shot there. Tien, you beauty finding <laughs> a way to get an advantage off the back of the play. Jackie Love, that's two fights in a row now where he goes so aggressive, flashing forwards there, trying to finish off Viper, but not having damage, not being able to finish the job and being punished by the side of EDG. Now they try and Good press night. in the mid lane. Knight, as you say, on a flank here, but the minion waves are clear. Yeah, EDG will back away, seeing Knight disappear from the top side and having that big wave crashing, they will just move over to collect that. So not trying to overforce things. EDG know that their wing con relies on Viper at these team fights, relies on them being able to set up properly. And the main focus for them right now is getting control of River. Like getting this vision control so that then they can always move between both Baron when it spawns in a minute and a half or just over a minute and a half and this dragon in two minutes time whereas for top esports it's trying to see okay can we get wayward rolling in this side now can we get him to get some pressure down so that then we can maybe force a tp maybe we can force something else for ourselves be the question what can they force because top esports they're the ones with the gold lead but actually behind on kills off the back of all of these skirmishes jj trying to make a play on tonight in the top side oh the stun lands great little shot there by jj but the emperor's divide happy to deny the play viper moving over though the laser trying to deny the escape but a tp out from night he's gone He's out of there. And now top esports press in the mid lane and in the bottom side as well. Wayward, massive damage onto that tower. Good charm by Scout to zone Tien away. This will be two towers taken yeah. by top esports because he flying straight pushing in the top side. But Knight will be there to counter that push. Ooh, charm from Scout. The rest of EDG are on the way. But your long range engage is gone with JJ not having access to that ultimate. So everyone on top esports will back away so it's a nice attempt from edg but top esports respond beautifully and get themselves two more towers now you've got the opportunity to push these waves in that little bit further make it a little bit more difficult for edg to face check things like the dragon like the baron as well but wayward will need to reset because with baron up dragon in 50 seconds as well he definitely needs to spend the gold he just picked up he really really does does have tp available so can join the dragon fight if it kicks off uh, in the next couple of seconds here but should be able to just walk back to this players mark trying to find a way into the river to fight for a bit of vision control here is jackie love supported by tn to look for mid priority they still have a tier one tower in the mid lane so it's basically impossible for edg to get any kind of significant priority no, and that's why they just want to see if they can hold on to this space and river a lot of vision control is still being placed by Top esports though, Flandre very close to Mega. Jackie Love trying to see if he can pop that and make it a bit more yeah, uncomfortable for EDG. Oh, Wayward trying to find a flank, but Flandre is just going in the front door here. To end the target is Viper just peppering away. Scout over the wall. But Top Esports walk out with their lives. Flandre might have gone too deep for this one. Counter Strike stun comes on out as Wayward dips over to the rest of his team. Top Esports low on health bars. I feel like they should give the Drake at this point. Night Charm forced to flash away. I think you've got to accept defeat, Top Esports. I don't think this is their team fight. It doesn't look like they'll back away anytime soon, Dagda. Jackie Love throwing out boomerangs. So much poke coming through from Viper and Scout over these walls. Top Esports will eventually be forced to back it up. 
very tense fight though way we're just managing to escape tn just barely getting away but edg this terror of an ad carry is starting to become a little bit too much for top esports to handle and i love the decisive play from edg right you can see oh, wait a wayward. uh Ooh. wayward is fine he's okay he'll jump away over to scout or to night every time i see azir in this series i'm gonna say scout it's yeah, night this yeah. game. <laughs> I've managed to catch myself every other time. It finally happens, the slip up. Uh, but yeah, Wayward trying to find that flank. Flandre just walks at them and goes, come on then. It's 5v4 while Wayward's off trying to get a flank. We're not letting that happen. And you can see how much both these teams want to get in towards that final top. Esports want to find that revenge against JDG, but it's Gout. Oh, nearly able to charm them away from that. Yeah, I don't know if that would have been a charm he wanted, though, honestly, because he might accidentally start himself a 1v4. His team wasn't quite there just yet. His knight will clear these chickens away. An EDG on the Baron now. Wayward with teleport available, pushing out on the bottom side. Oh, Viper. Dead. Viper slides into the mid lane, just goes on to Jackie Love. The damage is massive and forces Jackie Love away. The laser to try and finish the job, but answered by night as the shield bow is popped. Yeah, he does have the healing, though, because he has that shield bow. So, going to try and get that health bar back up. But that was very risky from Viper, especially with the amount of top esports members that were around. But gets the flash from Jackie Love. And that could be key now when you look towards a, a next Baron fight. Yeah, absolutely. Huge pickup. And Jackie Love hasn't had a chance to go back to base. Hasn't had a chance to heal. We'll be able to move over to the red buff. So, at least he'll get some regen there. Should be able to get his HP back up before the next fight both ad carries on three and a half items the next fight may well be a four item fight for both zeri and siva that is really critical mass for these ad carries because the fifth item usually defensive right usually not going to be the item that means you do all of the damage so it does feel like a scary moment in the game a very tense moment the scout looks for a flank good spell shield on the laser the big thing though is that you don't have to to play defensive here with your build path for viper because you've got the lulu because you've got this super strong front line in jj and flandre so at the moment he's going to be still building very much dps and that's why top esports really have to find a way to deal with viper you kill viper you win this game for top esports but viper you can see how strong this ad carry has been all split long all geared long for edg and if there's ever an AD carry to trust the game-winning play in, it feels like it's Viper. All career long for Viper, let's be honest. With top esports, they're just going to call the bluff for EDG and say, you know what, let's just do the Baron. We do it so fast with a Sivir and an Azir. They've almost finished it off. As JJ manages to dodge the ultimate from end, but it's too late. Baron taken now. What oh is God. the damage? Out from Viper. That is insane. He wants to win this game. He wants to even up this series. There's two. Make it three as Scout gets one as well. And Wayward just trying to escape, trying to protect his jungle and moving down to the bottom side as Flandre looking for picks. Scout there as well, looking for Wayward. Orbit Deception with a bit of damage here, but Wayward just trying to flee, trying to escape. Counter-Strike comes on out, has a minion wave to escape through, but Scout ain't stopping anytime soon. Walks on forward, Everfrost is there, and Viper has the damage, a third of the fight. And what a way to get on the board. EDG, we're bluffing top esports. They take the fight. They set up Viper. The AOE damage is massive from Edward Gaming. And although the Baron still stands on some of top esports, there's not a lot of awful lot of top esports members still standing. Viper, you can see there, the Ultra Shock Laser, the ultimate, the AOE damage with that static damage coming from the E. Viper rinses top esports that was mental i've never seen the combination of the w and ult uh for burst damage like that five thousand just over done by viper and basically one shot at jackie though in that play as well that was truly something terrifying to witness and now four and a half items you can see qss finish for viper he's got a cleanse and a qss how will you ever cc this area if you think back to the conversation just after the draft you were saying Dagda, that the zeri there's no one on top esports that can get on top of it well 
with a cleanse out of QSS, that's even more true than it once was. Yeah, it's such a smart build from um, Viper, and especially as well, because a ton of like the AoE damage or the long range damage that's threatening them is from Knight as well. And don't forget the buffs that came through onto QSS, pretty sizable to that magic resist coming in onto 1215. So it's going to help out with both Knight and also making sure that there's just, even when the cleanse is down, Viper stays up and standing. Um, Mako as well, Nikhil's Crucible. Like, you just never get to see CD Sadie. I feel like Zeri is just the new vein at this point. Zeri is that AD carry that if you build around it, if you get the items onto that carry, it's going to win you the games. The way that Vayne or Cogmore was looked at, you know, many years ago in League of Legends, um, and Viper, just one of these players that you know you can rely on him. He's been the late game insurance for EDG for a couple of years now. And it feels like it always pays off. I can't remember a game where Viper didn't show up, you know? Yeah, I literally, I think there is one series in the entire time I've seen that he hasn't been able to play. But, Landre, maybe caught out here. Landre knocked back here by the Empress to fight. Hops on out, though, and a bit of creative footwork from Flandre Gets him out of safety. Tiendo pushes him back in. There's a stun from the Counter-Strike, but the damage just isn't here. Jackie Love is diving the backline by himself. The man is a machine, and he can't find the pickle to JJ. He walks away on 1 HP, but Flandre fell. That's what matters the most as Top Esports put their foot on the accelerator. They want to break the base open. Viper has to be the man of the hour for EDG as he desperately tries to defend. Viper and Scout were there for the fight. Top Esports get the pick. Now, JJ, can he provide the front line for Viper? Because Top Esports, they want to take this to a 2 and 0 oh situation right now with a brilliant play on the side lane. What a play from Top Esports. Not only the pick on flan trade, but Jackie Love. Man, he has no fear. It does not matter what the situation is. He will go in 2v1 and JJ and Mako. No fear that the carries were going to arrive because he knew where they were on the map. Let's take another look, Dagda, because it felt so bad for Flandre, but then the creative footwork, I, I didn't know how this was going to end. It's, I don't know why EDG are here, though. Like, why are you face checking this part of the jungle when Scout is showing on bot wave? You know that your Zeri is over just the back of Red Bull, now resetting. Like, you're. If you run into top esports, like, what are you going to do? Like, I don't understand what the thought process is here for EDG. And it means that they're now top esports have an opportunity back into this game. Push on top side. Wayward can even walk up there if he wants to. As Dragon spawning, put serious threat onto the Nexus turrets for EDG. Whereas for Edward Gaming now, like, you have to try and find very quickly these fights or run a risk of end up losing your base, base to these super creeps. Yeah, Wayward staying on the bottom side for the time being, trying to get pressure in multiple lanes using those super creeps to present uh, to, to pressure on the top side. As Tien just about dodges away from the flail there. It's still a minute until Baron comes onto the map, and that feels like the next objective the top esports will want to look towards here. As they now off the back of that pick, off the back of that inhib, feel like they finally have control of the map, right? It's been a while since it's been comfortably one sided. This is where it now starts to get very tense. Top Esports can see, look, as long as we can keep up pressure in these lanes, as long as we can start to creep this vision control forward, it becomes very difficult for EDG to contest. Baron in 30 seconds, EDG want to be able to push up mid and get control over the river, but you even got like double super creeps now start to stack on the top side. How many times will Top Esports get away with these recalls? That's three already. We're only in game two of the series. We saw Mark in game number one barely get away with a recall. Oh, we wait. saw Tien in the top lane earlier on. Observers deep, highlighting deep. a very deep ward there. Wayward There's has double TP. I mean, use Wayward and Knight. Both of them can TP okay, onto this wave. It's double super creeps in this wave as well. So Flandre is here, but look at where Tien is. Like, he can get in behind here. This could be disastrous for EDG. It could be. Flandre in Meganar currently. So not really ideal timing if a fight were to kick off in the next sort of 30 seconds here. But he's just pushing out those supers. Tien on the flank here as top esports try and get some positioning. A great charm from Scout. Mark taking a big chunk, but Jackie Love trading it onto JJ and oh, Scout himself. But JJ has a warm odds. 
Tien now on this flank, looking for Scout, looking for JJ. Scout with the Spirit Rush here. They go over to JJ instead. Viper using that ultimate. Look at Top Esports group to four, but JJ on the front line. Viper's, Viper's gone. Out. He's sent packing as Mark chunked down by Flandre, but now Flandre locked on up, knocked into the fray and taken down. Denial onto Scout as he tries to escape, but he's chunked out by Jagulov. The boomerang dodged by JJ. Viper back in the fray, but it's too late. It's a massive error from EDG. The top lane fumble is going to be their downfall. Now Viper trying to see if he can get anything. But top esports, they see blood in the water. Knight is resetting. He's TP into that top wave. Two super creeps are there. Flandre, 30 second dead timers with Baron. This yeah. is top esports trying to strangle out EDG. Top Esports don't want Drake. They don't want more towers. They want to end the game. Jackie Love is here on the server. It's so difficult to deal with these Baron minions, but Viper has to be the man to step up. Laser across the team, but he doesn't find any targets. JJ trying to tank here, but he doesn't have the HP taken down. His way with threatens Viper. Viper onto the fountain as he flashes away, but the Nexus falls. And Top Esports, they do it again. They start another best of five, two and zero. Just as EDG are starting to get comfortable, top esports pull the rug out from underneath them. They pick Flandre, they catch JJ, and using the presence from the super creeps on that top side of the map to perfection, they get the flank that they want. The most patient man in the world, Tien, on that play, yeah. but it pays dividends in the end. And the thing is, how many times have we seen that this year? Tien being super patient for a play. We see it with his lane ganks during the regular season. We see it now with this incredible flank, forcing the hand of EDG, making them make a play and causing that chaos. And guess what? It's top esports. When the game is chaotic, top esports will almost always come out on top. The mojo is their <laughs> special element. That's where they're from. And the mojo is coming alive here. When you have a rematch against JDG on the line, when they are looking back at 2020 and saying, that was our time and we want to find it once more, Top Esports are not letting up an inch in this series. Now 2-0, and oh, we saw this against JDG. The reverse swept came through from JDG. Now they have to set themselves right and close out this series against Edward Gaming. Yeah, top esports basically say to JDG, anything you can do, we can do better. They will not let JDG have an LPL final without them. That ain't happening. This is, yeah, I feel like they're, they're bonded by destiny, you know. It's like an <laughs> anime storyline. If one makes it to the final, the other must as well. Or at least top esports would like to believe that. But as you said before, top esports have been in this position they were 2-0 up against jdg in their most recent series they didn't finish that series off they got reverse swept they need to tie a bow in this one jagger love top of the damage not too surprising in the civil let's be honest no not overly surprising but i think the manner in which this game went very surprising with the way that edg kind of got themselves caught out and it feels like again it's kind of just flandre overextending on these sides giving the opportunity for top esports to bring this back because we saw how viper was coming alive 40 percent of the team's damage like he was carrying these fights beautifully and really putting himself at the forefront to be the damage dealer that he needed to be but mistakes coming through from on the map from edg top esports punish again and it just feels like this time top esports are playing the map so much better than edg like constantly trading up constantly finding ways so that then like when we get to a third fourth dragon already like most of the outer turrets are gone for edg and it makes it very difficult for them to start contesting these objectives so yeah. top esports doing a really good job of putting it against edg and making sure they're not comfortable i mean that's the big thing right is the control the second it feels like top esports have control they they never let go right they they just push that vision line forward they maintain that vision line. you kept on referring to that red carpet in the rivers right like permanent vision control for top esports once they're ahead and it's so suffocating to play against edg finding that out first hand here as they are now against the ropes if edg lose one more game they are eliminated from playoffs and will have to go through the regional gauntlet to make it to the world championship once more their world championship after 2021 we'll see if they can though we're going to jump into a break and then find out how this one ends